Now, what are we in for today? Well, I've got something really special lined up. This is the Lenovo M920Q Tiny Mini PC. And it runs a 10 gigabit Ethernet NIC. Plus, uh, there's going to be a little bit of a thermal modification. We'll call it a secret modification. So stay tuned for that. We're going to go through this little, I'm going to call it a pocket rocket because it really is nearly pocket size. I mean, these things are one liter volume. Absolutely incredible. And here it is. The mini PC that is likely the best value that money can buy. Well, we're going to take a second look at those specifications. We can install 8th gen or 9th gen Intel CPUs T-series. We can fit up to 32 gigabytes of DDR4. We have an Intel Q370 chipset, which is quite unusual for a mini PC. There is a PCIe slot. Can you believe it? And quite a lot of other functionality. And I will stress that that particular slot there is the M.2, which is going to allow us to fit a Wi-Fi card or maybe in a few other different adapters, which is kind of handy. This chipset does open up a lot of possibilities. We can fit a whole bunch of additional storage. We also have additional connectors like a daughter board connected down the bottom here, which will allow us to install additional display ports. We have a few other connections like a Thunderbolt and a COM port. Plus a very neat mounting mechanism behind the CPU fan. I'll quickly remove that to show you what's cooking underneath. But we got our fan cable. We also have the speaker cable and then it just slots out of place. There's the cooler. Very, very neat packaging. Wait, this is the first Lenovo on the channel, is it? Yeah, it might well be. So this is kind of a special moment, but really impressed. It's quite a neatly assembled little machine. Now this is the PCIe slot. This is what we're here for. We want to install 10 gigabit Ethernet dual RJ45 ports. Pick this up for about 20 US dollars. PCIe 2.1 and it's a... Wait, wait, wait. Inspur? I thought this was an Intel. What's Inspur? I never heard of Inspur. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I know I know what you're thinking. This looks really similar to the Intel X540T2 10 gigabit dual RJ45 network interface card. Nice cooler on that one. This one's maybe less cool. Uh, pun intended, it runs really hot. But uh, wait a minute. That's not a PCIe slot. What is this? I thought I said PCIe slot. Did someone check the measurements on this? Oh, interesting. Okay, so that's definitely not what we're after. It's just the wrong size. So we'll can the video there. There's no way we can continue unless we have one of these. What is this? Well, this is an X16 riser adapter specific to this machine that allows us to convert it to an X16 PCIe 3.0 slot, which is ideal. I mean, we can fit anything in here just about as long as it clears. Maybe not an RTX 3090, although maybe. No, we won't go that way. But for now, let's test this out. 10 gigabit. Yeah, that looks pretty clean. Actually, that looks like a really good fit. But now the question is, does it clear? And can we actually get it to fit? Hmm, yep, that's gonna be problematic. I can sense it already. We have a clearance issue. It's okay, maybe it's the little connectors here, the serial connectors. We'll take these out. With a little bit of luck, they may well retain. We can keep a nice sealed uh, system. But I have this uh, vague feeling that it may not work. I guess we'll find out when we get there. Okay, let's test. And there's a lot of resistance. So no, we must remove this little brace. It's not a big deal. You can actually get custom ones for them. Not that I've uh, looked into in a lot of detail just yet. But check it out. There's so many daughter boards that can slot in, giving you additional display outputs. So that's kind of handy. Definitely check them out. Millions of different options. Give or take. But for now, without that bracket, we can install. Check the mounting screw on the side here. It's quite handy. But there it is. It's all installed. I'm not going to secure it for the time being. May still move the configuration around a bit. But there it is. Finally, a mini PC with 10 gigabit Ethernet. Well, I still got to test to make sure. But thus far, I'm confident. Now, this SATA cable is going to become redundant. I don't think there's enough clearance to get the SATA SSD in there. But uh, shall we remove the CPU cooler? I'm sure you're curious to see what's cooking underneath. Well, hopefully not cooking, hopefully freezing. Let's see uh, how hot this CPU may have been running. Oops, there's our third screw hiding behind the warranty sticker. Does that void our warranty? It's okay, pretty old machine now. These come are coming up on 2019. Oh dear. Yep, there it is. That's a little bit of run out. The uh, thermal paste is beginning to show somewhere, although it's not quite as crunchy as it could be. So this might have been recently repasted. 
But uh, there are some problems there. You can see the CPU's got a few bold patches. That's never a good sign for a CPU's thermal paste application. They clearly weren't using the top secret method. It's okay, I'll show you that a little bit later. But there it is. We have a very nice looking Intel, what was it? 8th gen or 9th gen? I can't tell. It's covered in thermal paste. So we'll call it the mystery CPU. I'll we'll tell you what, we'll quickly clear off this. We're really keen. We want to see what we got in the lottery here. Okay, it's an Intel i5-8500T, which uh, is quite a peppy little CPU. 2.1 gigahertz base, 3.5 gigahertz boost. Take note of the golden triangle here. We must align those when we reinstall. And very cool, you can actually upgrade the CPU. It's not been soldered down, so that's a really cool feature. We'll clear off the uh, pace here. I will point out here that pace is actually still pretty uh, decent there, so probably wasn't needed. But I'm going to future-proof. And a little bit of branding here. This is the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. Take note, cryo, Greek word for cold. A little bit of brand placement there, why not? And I'm so confident in this product. I bought 10 mils. So this better work really well. But thus far, very impressed. It's actually given some really good thermal results. And stay tuned. This is the best thermal application method on the internet. And you've probably never seen it before. There it is. You saw it here first. You must first apply your initials, then you rinse. No, if you've been on the channel long enough, you know we don't take shortcuts. We use the spreader method. Now, I'm not joking. It's pretty tedious. It's not an easy method by any means. But why would you want to do this? Well, it's 100% coverage of the IHS. That means we're going to have some pretty effective cooling. The only catch is you've got to spend about four hours to spread it evenly, especially this pace. It doesn't spread as easily as some of the others on the market. And uh, 4,000 times later, that's quite a fast speed up on the video, we eventually got some sort of frustrated spreading uh, going on there. Yeah, that's not my best work. But anyway, one of the most common problems with this method is air pockets. How do I avoid them? Well, we add five blobs evenly spread around. It also ensures that 100% coverage that I promised, and then we resecure. Uh, LGA1151 has never been so happy, and oh, we need some compressed air. Yep, that definitely needs to blow. Okay, that's looking much cleaner now, nice and tidy. We'll reinstall it. Sorry, slightly out of view, but uh, there are a couple of clips you've got to keep our eye out for once it's secured. We have three screws to remount. That's not too big a deal. I'll show you those in a second. But let's quickly attach these. I do like to use a crisscross pattern on any CPU coolers that I install, making sure we get even tension and a gradual increase in tension. Always good to check your handiwork when you're done as well. That's feeling solid. Excellent. Wait, are we finished? Pretty close. We still got that cooler to reinstall, so I guess we'll throw that back on. And uh, then maybe some testing, maybe some benching. What are we going to do with this machine? There's so much more to discuss, but there's our little cooler. Normally I would de-dust this, but I think we'll skip that for now. Something about building PCs at 12 a.m. That's just not a good idea to uh, get the air compressor running. Okay, reconnecting our speaker cable. These are quite tedious. You may want to use a flathead screwdriver. Gives you a little bit better leverage. And our CPU fans connected and we're done. It's really that easy to build on these little mini PCs. It's really well built. I have to admit, Lenovo's done a good job. So we'll reinstall our upper panel here, or I guess our case panel. One screw to secure it, bit of a panel gap. That's not too major, I've seen worse. Some cars have uh, much larger panel gaps, if you know what I mean. But let's recycle those screws. I don't want to lose them in case I do find a bracket or a brace for the rear to cover up those ports. Do we do some branding there? Thermal Grizzly certified? Or thermally grizzlied? Is that a thing? Maybe it should be, but maybe it's too corny. But there it is. We do have one last little thing. You thought it was all done, but there's one more little compartment. Check it out. Bet you were wondering where the RAM modules were. And, uh, oh, there's the screw. There it is. So we have an M.2 slot. And I know there's two. You would expect there to be a second, but that's on the Gen 2 model. A little bit newer. Plus, we have our dual RAM slots. Now, right now, there's only one fitted. And, I mean, it's a Samsung. Pretty good quality. 8 gig. We could double it. Here they are. The HyperX Impact DDR4 8 gig modules running at 2,666 megahertz. And we'll quickly remove this one. Which one's better, Kingston or Samsung? Well, probably Samsung on that one. But 
I haven't had any problems with these uh, really cheap RAM modules from uh, Kingston, HyperX brand. Not too bad. I'm pretty happy with them overall. So I'll throw them in. Very easy installation. Of course, I left the uh, focus a little bit out, so we're going to have to remove them again just for the sake of cinematography. It's okay. You don't want blurry footage. That's not cool. So there it is, reinstalling, and always listen for the click. Oh, oh, that, that really didn't sound good. Uh, we'll try the second one. I'm hopeful it has a very normal click. The first one definitely sounded a bit rough. Oh, a little bit tricky to find it in the slot here today, but that's okay. Click. Oh, oh, that was that was much better. Yep, that's very, very good. So first one, not so good. The second one, a little bit higher quality. Now this uh, Deal M.2 slot, I will stress here, if you get the Gen 2 version of this model, they come with two M.2 slots. So it's probably around 2021 that you want to keep an eye out for the model date. And now we're done. We can throw on our screw, remount this case, and then what could we use this mini piece? Oh, there's lots of thermal paste there. That's not good. No idea where that came from. But this is ideally suited to your home network. You can add them in many, many functions. We'll go through that in more detail in a second. But let's have a quick look at this rear I.O. We've got a power brick connection proprietary. DisplayPort 1.2, we have a USB 3.1, HDMI 1.4, quite good for display. We have our USB 3.1 Gen 1, very handy, keyboard connection. We have USB 3.1 high speed, two of them. And we have one, one gigabit Ethernet port, RJ45, and obviously our two ins per 10 gigabit connections. And a little Kensington lock, should you choose to secure your system, and obviously the CPU venting. And there's our aerial. Quite handy if you do require Wi-Fi connections. Now, front hour, very simple power. We have a mic, headphone, USB-C, which is quite handy. And obviously uh, another USB 3.1, which runs at 24-7 power. Now, what did I use the system for? Well, I actually installed Proxmox. And full disclosure, this is just going to be a teaser of some of the cool things you can do. We'll do a full video on this in the future, trying to run through this on top of the little overview of the mini pc is a whole bunch of footage so this makes life a little bit easier and there it is proxmox very straightforward installation definitely check some related videos from other youtubers as well on the installation quite a simple process but what am i going to load on here well i'm downloading a whole bunch of different operating systems and i'm going to run them all as virtual machines so example here's TrueNAS running as a virtual machine installed on Proxmox, which means it's not technically installed, it's just floating around. And what about the speeds? Well, I haven't done any optimization, but we're clocking around 2.3 gigabits per second. Now, not quite the 10 that we were promised, but that's pretty good, all while running a very low power draw. Now, this machine is impressive, and I know you're hoping for a whole bunch more information, but for the time being, we're going to call it there on this little mini PC. Stay tuned for a future video, we'll call this a part one, Part two, we're going to go through that cluster setup. How do we get this little mini PC running multiple OSs? And, I mean, thermals. How good were the thermals? Did we actually attain some sort of drop? Yeah, I bet you're all hoping for that this video. It's okay, we'll tackle that next video. Take it easy out there. See you on the next video. Stay tuned.